how many gods are there? Oh, one, of course. You, you don't think I'm that ignorant. You, I said, no. I, but I said, uh, that's the question in the catechism. And uh, that mollified him a little. I said, how many persons are there in God? Well, that was an uh, uh, unfair <laughs> question to ask. Uh, Benny said, two. Oh, dear. And he, the look on my face must have shown my dismay. He said, five. I said, Benny, you're guessing. I said, three. One, two, three. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ignorantly called them then. Uh, the Father's God, the Son's God, the Holy Ghost is God. Three divine persons, one God. Oh, well, I, I see that now. He said, uh, I, he said, I said, now, the next class will be tomorrow morning. He said, well, is that all you're going to tell me? I said, that's the beginning. I said, you memorize it. Think that over. Three divine persons, one God. Father's God, Son's God, the Holy Spirit is God. They met, uh, all are one God. Oh, he said, I know that now. I said, the point is, know it tomorrow morning. <laughs> Well, the next morning, no Benny. So I had a, this time I found him outside. Oh, he had forgotten all about it. Uh -huh. So I dragged him up to the chamber of inquisition. I said, Benny, how many persons are there in God? Five. I said, no, Benny, three. Oh, and I don't want to contradict you, Father, but uh, I distinctly remember Father McShane who taught theology in Washington. I distinctly remember him saying that there are five persons in God, uh, and he held up his hand That's to proof. emphasize it. <laughs> I said, no, Benny, three. I couldn't get that. He stubbornly, st I don't think he, he wanted to mm. learn it. And he, he was deliberately pretending to be ignorant, mm -hmm. that ignorant. So I said, Benny, you win. I said, uh, the theological course is ended. So I wrote to Mar and told him that I didn't think anyone short of the Almighty God could teach <laughs> Benny any theology. He said, uh, I don't see Father you and Father Flynn in the class anymore. He said, uh, what happened? So I told him. He says, oh, Father Raymond, you're too impatient. You don't have the patience to be a teacher. I said, and I suppose you do? He said, yes. I said, well, are you willing to take him? He said, yes. I said, fine, I'll go to Benny and tell him to come to you. So every, for several mornings, Benny was in Flynn's room. Flynn was paralyzed, he couldn't move around. So about a, a week, four or five days hand running, I passed Flynn's door, or uh, 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 Eugene Flood's door. It was wide open. He was there sm smoking a pipe reading. Finally, I said, Gene, where's uh, your pupil? He said, that jackass. <laughs> he said, you were right. Nobody can teach that guy. So we wrote and told Mar that. It was hopeless. Well, finally, Benny happened to uh, be in Washington when Teisling came over on a visitation. And Teisling went down there. How Benny got along with Teisling, I don't know, because Benny didn't know a word of any foreign language, and he knew no Latin. And Teisling, knew very little English. He knew German and French and Italian, but but anyhow, Benny conveyed to him the, show, the date he entered the order, and he was, when uh, he finished one year in logic, they'd tell him to repeat that year. He was the perennial student mm -hmm. in logic. Class after class came, graduated, Benny remained and renewed his course in logic. And at the end of four or five courses, he still didn't know what the Dickens, Barbara, Chelaren, and the rest, rest of it meant. He thought it was Arabic. 
So Keisling summoned the council. He said, you ordained that man, oh, no. Deacon. Now you'll or, uh, or have him ordained a priest. And he My said, goodness. So they had to start in about eight months ahead of time teaching him enough theology to and the rubrics. And they actually ordained. And they ordained him as a mass priest. Uh, and uh, that was the beginning of Benny's popularity because uh, in those days, the, the later the mass, the more people came. Mm -hmm. The old time pastor couldn't understand that. He, the late mass was 10.30 and mm -hmm. uh, God knows everybody's up by that time. But that was always a high mass mm -hmm. and a long mass. <clears throat> and uh, only society people went to that mass mm -hmm. to be seen and see. So uh, <clears throat> uh, Benny loved to uh, sleep late. And when that joyful news went around the parish, he was became a man in great demand <laughs> because Nobody wanted the late mass, the 11 or the 11.30 or the 12. You see, in those days, uh, you were not allowed to eat anything before mm -hmm. mass or to take a drink of water even. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, not even an hour before. Mm -hmm. you, if a, five hours before you took a uh, mouthful of water, you could not say mass that mm -hmm. day. And of course, in the rectories in the city, you couldn't sleep late. There was too That's much right. noise and bell telephones and so on. So you'd get up and get a nice headache. And by the time your 11 o'clock mass started, your head was splitting. And it would generally have to be a high mass. Mm -hmm. But here was a man, you had to go down to his room at 1030 and shake him well but to wake him up. Then you had to go back at 10 minutes later and drag him out of bed. He had fallen asleep again. Oh, was he popular. He liked to say the late mess. Hey, pastor after pastor fought to have him assigned to his house. My goodness. And uh, Benny ended his last days in a blaze of glory. Only he couldn't talk as speak from the pulpit. He tried it once when at St. Rose, when... Uh, Yes, it was a priest then. When Christmas, it was his turn to go over to the church at the main mass and give the talk and read the announcements. So uh, Christmas came into my room, and he was talking to me. And all of a sudden, my God, look at the time. And he said, I should have been over there five minutes ago. He said, Ray, run over there, will you, and uh, read the announcements. Oh. And uh, just say a few words. So I tore over. You had to go downstairs in one building mm -hmm. and then cross over to another uh, sent sort of a building. You went down the corridor, and when you opened the door, there were about five steps leading down behind the main altar. And uh, that, that's all been torn down. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just reached the head of those stairs, of uh, the last stairs, when I heard Benny in the pulpit. Uh, next uh, is, uh, Tuesday, there will be, uh, next Tuesday, there will be a, uh, and he was holding the book, he was near us, uh, he said, you know, uh, the prior's handwriting is very poor, <laughs> and the, the people roared, you know. And Benny thought that was in applause. So he went on stumbling through the announcements. Then he came to one. And next Sunday, there will be a, co yes, a collection. Give them hell. Oh, no. And the minute he, he put his hand, that, <laughs> the congregation got hysterical with laughter. That was in parentheses. Yes. Give them hell for the, the last collection, you know. It was poor. And uh, I, I thought, I'm not going to get up in, <laughs> now and ask Benny to step out. So I staggered, doubled up with laughter, back to the, the prior's room. And he saw me coming, doubled up, and howling.